but my burden is for my seven grandchildren. That's who I fear for, because they're going to grow up and already are growing up in a culture that is radically different than the one I grew up with. And I don't want them to grow up in a culture where that a 12-year-old can't get a tattoo, buy liquor, buy tobacco, can't enter into a contract, get married, can't drive a car, but can make the decision to have his or her body chemically castrated or surgically mutilated. That's not a culture I want to grow up in. I don't want my grandchildren. Wow. Seven of them, two of them are girls. I don't want the two girls, one of whom is 12 years old, I do not want her to be in the girls' locker room and have a biological boy undressing in front of her and her being expected to undress in front of a biological boy. And if she says anything about it that it makes her uncomfortable, she's the one that gets into trouble. I don't want that for my grandchildren, and I bet you don't either for yours. But the election this year, let me be very blunt, is not as much a political decision for this country. I've been in politics for a little over 30 years. I've run for office. I've won offices. I've held office. I've served. But I can also tell you that what we're facing today is not the traditional historical political spectrum that is horizontal. Left versus the right liberal versus the conservative, Democrat versus the Republican. That's the horizontal spectrum that we have mostly lived under. We're no longer living in a horizontal horizontal world with horizontal issues. Folks, our issues today are vertical. They are up and down, heaven and hell, righteous and unrighteous, good and evil. And we have to understand that the battle is spiritual. The consequences will be political, but the underpinning of it, never kid ourselves, is spiritual. There's no other explanation for the hatred that is being leveled against the Jewish people and specifically the state of Israel. It's irrational. Who would have ever believed in our lifetime we would see on the major college campuses of America where college students would believe that it was perfectly okay to shut down the voices and even the ability of a Jewish student to walk across the campus. Look, I grew up in the 60s. My gosh, we had people taking over the president's office at college campuses arguing for free speech. Today, they're taking over the campuses to argue against free speech. This is a radical difference. We have people who don't see the world like we grew up seeing it. And the result yeah, is that... Real. We're living in a day where people think that it's perfectly okay for folks to burn down a city and trash a police car and burn down a police station. And the news media will say it's a mostly peaceful protest as the fire rages behind them. It was surreal. That's not a difference of opinion. Folks, this is insanity. We're living in an upside-down world. And when the theme of this conference, pray, vote, stand, I pray that you will embrace this as more than a slogan, that you will see it as a command. There are 40 million self-described evangelical Christians who do not vote in a presidential election. Let me explain what that means. If half of those people who sit in church on their blessed assurance would pray, stand, and vote, we would change every election in this country from the school board all the way to the White House. And if you look at their culture and you say, this culture is messed up. Why, we've got people saying crazy stuff. We have people that don't know what a woman is. We appoint them to the Supreme Court. That makes sense, doesn't it? I'm for women's rights. I don't know what a woman is, but I'm for women's rights. This is crazy town business, people. So if we want to combat that, we better be salt. Otherwise, it gets worse and worse, and the putrefaction of our culture degenerates into something that is unrecognizable and unlivable. Wherever there is a lack of salt, there is rot. If you look at our culture and society today and say, it's rotting, 
it's because there's not any salt. And who's the salt? Are we expecting the politicians to deliver that? You shouldn't. God is expecting his children, the people in our pews. He's expecting us. Amen. To be the salt. And he said, not you could be, you should be, you might be. He said, you are the salt of the earth. But are we acting like it? No, we, we enjoy going to church. And that's our huddle. But if you have huddles and you never run the play, you never can win the game. And folks, we have a lot of people that get gathered up of a huddle and they leave the field. We need some people who will pray, vote, and stand. And that's why we're here. America's Health will return in just a moment. Thank you. 